Did Jesus fulfill prophecy found in the Hebrew Bible? Does he just leap off every page? What if one does not believe? Do they have scales over their eyes? Today, on the Exodus Project, we will delve into the Christian list of 365 prophecies alleged to have been fulfilled by Jesus and the dubious claims and schemes that surround such fulfillments. Throughout the span of this series, it will become clear that the correct number of prophecies fulfilled by Jesus is actually zero. I am joined with a very special Jewish friend of mine, and he has a question for everybody. So I'm going to turn this over to him and let him ask his question, and we'll talk about it. All right. All right. Thank you, Stephen. Steve, sorry. Uh, basically, I just find it really weird. This is a really like weird question. I'm like, what did Jesus actually accomplish that we can say that he's the Messiah? Like, what tangible evidence in the world today can we say, oh, Jesus is the Messiah? Because we hearken back to, you know, the bar, our hook buzz and everybody else. And what's their one de denominator um, that the world is still the same? There's no peace on right. earth. Right. There's no ingathering of the exiles, of all the exiles. And we still sin today. Like Christians still sin. Sure. Um, everyone still sins. So what did jesus actually accomplish like how can you say that he's the messiah and if you say that there's a second coming wouldn't you say that then he failed for what the messiah was supposed to do or concede that he's gonna do it when he comes back he just hasn't done anything so what's i just don't get why people follow this man who calls himself the messiah yet he didn't do anything and that's basically it sure yeah i mean that's really all the things you brought up um to begin what did he do that's such a good question like what did he actually do what is there tangible that we can look at and understand to come to the conclusion Yes, this guy was the promised Messiah. Well, we have to look at the Jewish scriptures that the New Testament says it cites. Um, world peace, a worldwide knowledge of God, uh, a rebuilt temple, um, no more war. In right. fact, it'll say that for, I think it's seven years, the nations will have to burn the implements of war, right? right. None of that. We see none of that. Zero. So then when you when you get to the topic of the second coming, that's really – that's a consolidation of guilt, right? Right. That's, totally. I that's, just don't understand. It's a device added in to be like, well, you know, the things that were prophesied, he didn't do those. You know, he had a different mission the first go-round, and he'll do that the second go-round. Well, his first go-round, he also said that he'd be right back, and he never came back. So – it's um yeah the whole second coming story is just that it's a fairy tale right it's it's really a way to dodge that bullet i guess you could say <laughs> and and i was looking up just on the internet and i so i go to this white uh website called gotquestions.org which seems to me to be like a protestant oh it's super christian yeah super christian site and i'm like second coming so i put that in there and it literally states the old testament prophets did not make clearly this distinction between the two comings so they literally acknowledge that this whole two coming theory is not right it's not biblical 
exactly it's it's, it's not it's, difficult. It, it, right. yeah it's it's not it's not and they they start citing passages in the greek testament now i'm going i'm like isn't that circular reasoning <laughs> 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 you know so what's what they're selling is is belief i guess that's what it, the main thing what it comes down to like they oh, could never know jesus is the messiah they have to believe because he hasn't done anything it's like sure. me saying that the rock on my neighbor's front doorstep is going to turn into a centaur <laughs> and take over the world so basically i don't know what else to say because it, it 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 seems like it's illogical sure you know i i i just came to this realization i was like wait i'll grant them you know what i'll grant them all the every all the prophecies everything who cares look at the world right Everyone's still, still sitting. sitting they're sure. still sitting like i don't understand i just don't get it my brain well, not me, comprehend let me play some devil's advocate and turn it around on the context of bar kokhba which you mentioned earlier why don't Jews believe in him? Because he failed. Because we failed. What we expect of him, he failed. Because he's know? dead, right? <laughs> right, he's dead. He's dead. You know, and then they're going to start bringing up the Chabad Rebbe. Guess what? That's also incorrect. Sure. There's, there's Chabad people that are, like, opposed to that whole notion. Uh-huh. You know? So when they bring that up they're like yeah jews want a messiah it's well known that jews are waiting for the messiah they've been waiting for the messiah right christians, christians have been killing jews for centuries and muslims as as well mm -hmm. so like we all want a messiah <laughs> so i just don't understand and this whole new covenant thing and i'm like wait the new covenant what a failure of a new covenant this is if jack and jill are still sitting right like it doesn't <laughs> it, it doesn't make any sense you know uh -huh. i just don't understand it and i just wanted to voice that to you yeah of course i mean it's it's certainly a major major problem that a lot of them don't know what to do with you know and they jump through leaps and bounds to avert your eyes from the major problems like that right to you know little petty stuff that really doesn't matter right, right? You, you and i have dialogued so many times about the hula hoops that they that they spin around to make their claims see legit seem legitimate right but at the end of the day if if you're failing on the baseline what do those hula hoops even mean you know right right no and then definitely me and you were going to go through you know, the ones that I love going through is basically the whole adoption theory, which you went through on a video. Mm -hmm. And it just doesn't make any sense. And I'm like, who cares? Who cares if he's adopted, if he healed the blind, the sick, if he walked on water, created the hoverboard? Who cares? No yeah, one who cares. Doesn't make, it, make, it makes no difference. It's I just... Mean, we, can, we can peruse so many different first century writings and find numerous different miracle workers that did all the same things. It means right. nothing. It means nothing. You know, it's just, my brain just keeps on going. What's the difference of him or Christian, not even him. I would say the Christian movement, then a cult because they say, First, you got to believe us, and then you'll get the truth. I'm <laughs> like, well, wait, let's let's logically go through this motion and be like, what does every cult member say? First, you got to join the cult, and then you'll be revealed the secrets. Right. And then my brain's going, then why do you need proof texts? And what's funny when you bring up secrets and all that type of stuff. The Torah expressly um, 
the Torah expressly rules out secrets right from the get go. Right from the get go, and in chapter twenty nine of Deuteronomy, we see um, the hidden things belong to Hashem, but the things revealed belong to the Jews and their children forever, that they may keep the words of this Torah. So, if you're ever questioning like who to go to for teaching, or who has the truth, or where the truth lies, right? Go to the Jews. You yeah. know, you're it's Deuteronomy is in a Christian Bible, just like it's in a Jewish Bible, right? And it's translated correctly in a, in a Christian Bible, and it says the revealed things belong to us and our children forever. <laughs> so as soon as it's as soon as now Gentiles are the ones telling you we have the truth and the Jews are blind, well, I'm sorry, but that just goes against the entire premise. Right. It, it's it, basically like if the revealed things people. if the revealed things belong to the to the Jews and their children, them being blind isn't even an option. Correct. I totally. I just yeah. I just don't understand. And it's pretty simple. Like it's literally pretty simple. They're, and then they start attacking the laws of Noah. They're like Noah Hyde is incorrect. I'm like, wait, how is this incorrect if Noah wasn't a Jew? And he was considered righteous. Right. Like, what's going on here? It's pretty easy to figure out, well, Noah's not a Jew. He was considered righteous. What do I have to do to be a righteous Gentile? Mm -hmm. I don't understand. Like, it's not magic. It's not talking parables. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's straightforward. Uh-huh. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's very annoying, and that's about it. That's all I got. Cool, man. Yeah, I appreciate you wanting to uh, share that with us and ask that question. And it's it's an important question. You know, it's a question that every Christian, because let's be real, and this can be the final point we talk on. Every Christian is going to say, "I believe Jesus is the Messiah," because. I love him. I have a relationship with him. He's in my heart and he saved me from my sins. A pet rock can do the same thing. Pet rock can do the same thing. Every other religion has the same thing going for it. Right? Right. Um, but what matters is does this fulfill the scriptures you're saying it does? You know, if if Christianity just sold itself as its own unaffiliated religion, it probably would have a lot less problems right now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Completely. But it it really signed its own death warrant when they started writing into the New Testament, you know, as it is written. Thus it's fulfilled, as it says in the prophets. These different things that are presenting it as an explicit fulfillment of prophecy in the Tanakh. And like I said, it signed its own death warrant with that. It made it, it made it fully reliant on the Hebrew scriptures. Therefore, if the Hebrew scriptures don't say what they're saying, it says, you have to reject it. Have to. I agree. And you and I both know plenty of people who have. <laughs> right. And I'm just, you know, being a logical person. I'm going, wait. You call him the Messiah, yet you're sinning. What Messiah is this? Mm -hmm. well, there's there's a war going on. Man, what a low level Messiah! <laughs> I right. don't know what to say. You know. <laughs> yep. Good point. So. Yeah, that's basically it. That's that's my question to all the Christians that, you know, subscribe and look at your channel and they start, you know, debating online with their comments. I'm just asking, either make me a video and give to Steve the link and just, I just want to start a dialogue and be like, hey, why does your belief in this guy who's done literally nothing <laughs> I don't understand. I'm like, he's literally done nothing. Right. You know, except being used to conquer, you know, all the land. 
Yeah, it's been weaponized 100%. Yeah, it's been weaponized. So I just don't understand, you know, I really, I just want to break it down on the simplest level and be like, what did he accomplish? And that's a very fair question, my friend. Right. You know? It's a very fair question. That's it. Because honestly, he didn't accomplish a whole lot of anything. That, that's what I mean. I, like, he, he didn't do anything. Like, how can you say he is the actual Messiah? What a Christian has to say is, like, I believe. The yeah, only thing a Christian the, has is, I believe. Definitely. You know, oh because God. a Christian can never say... I know Jesus is the Messiah. Because you're basically denying your whole belief because he's failed. Mm -hmm. Or he hasn't accomplished it yet, which still is a fail, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> like you can't you can't say you can't say, oh, he's gonna do it later. I'm like, well, yeah, at this there, point are no, in time, there are no do-overs, right? Yeah, not even that. I'm like at current time, he's still a failure. Uh -huh. I believe he's going to come back and not be a failure. Like, okay. I don't, yeah. I'm not subscribed to that belief because your own commentators say that the second coming is not even biblical in the Tanakh. So, and then, and then the others, the early church fathers said it happened already. So, right, like right. which one is it? You know. So that's basically it, man. I don't know what else to say because it's just weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's just weird. <sighs> yeah, man, that's great. I appreciate the, I appreciate you reaching out. I appreciate you, um, you know, really posing this. I think it's going to be eye opening. Um. If you've been watching this channel long, it shouldn't be anything you've never heard before, but maybe it just hasn't been worded this way. You know, maybe it'll get you thinking just like it got me thinking. And just like it's got, you know, thousands, millions of others thinking, you know? Um, so yeah. Any final remarks, any, any final comments before we wrap up? Um, no, I'd say basically just God gave you a brain. Right. You know. Use it. <laughs> use it <laughs> you don't believe you know what's that guy what's that kool-aid guy what's the guy who gave the kool-aid to everybody jim jones. jones you don't believe he's the messiah don't he believe died. david koresh is the messiah either right what's the deal what's the difference between jim jones and jesus is it because he's a jew I'm like <laughs> so what right. jews have been called the Messiah and have failed as well. They're dead as well. Like, get over it. Yep. Just because someone's a Jew doesn't mean, you know, they're for some reason they're bringing in the Messiah right. and the world hasn't changed yet. If that was the only qualification, there's a lot of people who could be the Messiah. <laughs> so, right. You know, and that, that's the thing. I'm like, did he actually do any other prophecies? No. There you go. And then my belief is that they will they're gonna say is like, well, I believe he did all the prophecies. I'm like, dude, if he did all the prophecies, you would not be sitting and there's yeah, not where's war. the world peace. Yeah, where's the world peace? Oh, he's gonna come the second time. Well, guess what? He's still a failure. It's been you believe <laughs> you believe in the rock, go believe in the rock. You know, when the rock transforms into the centaur and takes over the world. It'll be nice, but other than that, you're you're still wrong. That's it. You are uh, you are quite a words. <laughs> you have quite a way with words. <laughs> yeah, yeah brilliant, very brilliant. Um, yeah. So everybody, I hope this helps out. I hope this gets you thinking. Um, and I just hope you don't go in our comment section and say well jesus is god like we don't care about that give us something tangible yeah. or i i'm sorry but i'll have no i'll have no problem hiding <laughs> you from the channel and you won't be allowed to comment That's i love it no i've seen it and i'm like jesus is god and i'm like what are you five right like, like <laughs> you can't 
show me anything to prove that Jesus is anything. Right. You know, you all you have is your belief. I'm like, we have Tanakh. We have Torah. Uh -huh. You have your belief, and that's it. Yep. And it's sad because they be they believe that the Torah is the divinely inspired word of God. Right. It, it's just, it's mind-blowing sometimes. Really, it is. And that's why most, most Orthodox Jews don't even debate or waste their time because it's such a simple matter that their brain goes, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, they're like, I got better things to talk about than some person who thinks this guy is who's dead or right. whatever think says he's the Messiah and look at the whole world. Yeah. Like if that's your view of the Messiah, then we're not even in, on the same level. Not even on the same wavelength. Right. Right. No, not at all. So, yeah, no, I love your channel. It's really good, really informative. It's, you know, you tackle things that are out there that are important with and with backing of sources, which is amazing, you know. Yeah, I try to, try to use a bunch of different avenues to show truly what was going on. I mean, I tried to take the route of history and the route of other sources. I mean, church father sources, you know, yeah. like for example, uh, origins contra selsum contra kelsum. It's a problem, bro. Like for the Christian cause, contra kelsum is a problem. Yeah, that <laughs> Kelsus had no dog in that fight. He, right. was, he was a Roman pagan and every Jewish argument he brings is on behalf of what he calls the learned of the Jewish people basically the rabbis, right? right? They're all the same arguments the rabbis use even today. So all you messianic rabbis that say that Rashi invented stuff, you're crazy. I love that one. That's the best one. That's, that's, that's the ones that they go to like, Oh, I, I've, uh, I've encountered, uh, I went to the site Jews for Jesus and one for Israel and they say all that stuff. And I'm like, any five-year-old learned Jew would would just laugh would laugh at you so silly yeah. laugh at you you know and if your faith is that weak that you have to mangle texts and that that your own church fathers disagree with you and that's the thing that's those are actually the videos i get the least amount of hateful comments on right. are the ones that are just citing the church fathers because what can they say they're not real christians well okay then neither are you Right. right. It's the easiest response. Well, then neither of you. Right. You know? Uh, but it's so incriminating when you have church fathers who are writing liturgy saying, oh, yeah, the second coming happened already. <laughs> <laughs> We're living in the millennium. The book of Revelation didn't even get into the book. It was only put into the canon because Augustine said, yeah. <clears throat> Augustine started playing Dungeons and Dragons, and he decided to put Revelations in there. Well, yeah. Well, it got a lot of opposition, and then Augustine was like, "No, no, 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 no. You're this. This stuff is edifying. You know, the second coming happened already. You know, we're <laughs> we're in good shape." And they're like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> you know, and that's how that's how, that's how Revelation got put in. So they, I'll have to send you the source. I think the Church Father's name is Chrysostom, John Chrysostom. He wrote he wrote basically like Psalms. He wrote like Christian Psalms. Mm -hmm like liturgical songs to sing and poems and that kind of stuff. And uh, he writes one where he's basically thanking God for all the, all the things that happened through Christ, like the, the death, the resurrection, all these different things. And then he says, and the second coming. <laughs> <laughs> and the second coming. And this was like, this was like in the year 350. Uh huh. So 1700 yeah. years ago, they believed the second coming already happened. You know, so it's yep. so enlightening what the church fathers was because you had no other Christianity. You didn't right. have Protestantism 1500 years ago. So what the people thought is what was preserved and 
everything only started changing 500 years ago. So for 1500 years, that's all you had, right? That's right. So it's, it's a problem, man. It's a problem for them. And if they would just learn some history and read the stuff that the, you know, that their churches tell them not to read, they, well, they tell them not to read it because if they did, they'd be out of the church. Right. I just tell my Catholic friends to look at the catechisms and realize what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> read your own catechisms and come back to me. back everyone this is another episode of the exodus project i'm your host steve eisenhower uh once again i am joined with my good friend rabbi Stuart federo Ta-da! Right from <laughs> houston texas um author of judaism and christianity a contrast available in the description please check that out um as always i'll plug the hebrew jumpstart also linked in the description check that out um any news on the workbook I have sent it to the uh, webmaster person who does the HebrewJumpstart.com, but he, Steve, he is about to take as as big a load as he can of supplies and health stuff and and first aid equipment and all this to Israel. Wow, personally, wow, I know. So he he's got enough on his plate, and I don't know how long it'll be before he can turn it everything you know his attentions to what i need sure so but it but it's been sent we'll see what happens well keep us updated absolutely but until that workbook is available check out that check out that link follow it learn it brilliant resource um also my book is available description christian coloring book um yeah check that out as well and as you know as always you guys know what's down there tons of resources um right. before we get started hit that subscribe button turn on those notifications give the rabbi and i and me give the rabbi and me a big thumbs up and yeah today we are going to start a potential series of um the 365 prophecies yeah. christians say jesus fulfilled and, and it's usually the same list Right. right. And you find a bunch of different places all over the internet and it's always 365. <laughs> okay, that's not true. Sometimes it's 300. Sometimes, you know, it's other numbers. Usually it's 365. How convenient. Right. And, and it, it's all over the place. What I want to make sure that everybody understands is that the best possible response to any of these 365 prophecies that jesus supposedly fulfilled is on a blog by sophie sagai yeah and it's her first name is s-o-p-h-i-e-e two e's okay last name is sagai s-a-g-u-y yeah and if you just type in sophie sagai spelled the right way you'll come up with her just absolutely wonderful website, mm -hmm. uh, which is Judaism is not Christianity minus Jesus. Right. And one of the sections on there is her uh, response to the 365 prophecies that supposedly Jesus fulfilled. She's brilliant. It's a wonderful website, incredibly useful. Uh, it is, uh, uh, what's the word? Um, uh, 
you can easily do searches and find the verse that they say he fulfilled jesus it's fulfilled navigable <laughs> navigable thank you that's perfect word and and just go to it but a lot I of will i will also put the link to that website in the description for easy good. easy following good uh i have i i have learned a lot from sophie i think she's brilliant i think her website is brilliant and i think she's wonderful so sure. don't... i've actually i've actually been on it without knowing whose it was before right it's it's yeah it's quite good right. eclectic yes. it's eclectic and i like that yes so but okay, we're going to take it from the top. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, Genesis 3.15 is where they're going to, right. you know, yeah, you, the, usually, that's usually the smoke the, they're going to grab first, right? Right, but usually the uh, verse they go to, uh, well, they take it in order, so they start with this one, but, you know, usually they even do Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Totally. Okay. All right. So, and, and let's be clear about what's going on here. Mm hmm Genesis chapter 3, verse 15 reads, and I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. It shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Mm -hmm. Okay. As you'll see, Christianity understands this by saying, wait a minute. The only sex with seed are men. Women have eggs. So look how special and sacred and, and holy and, and unusual uh, Mary is because it refers to her seed. She's the only one with seed. How could she have Jesus without sex? <laughs> Therefore, it's her seed that developed into Jesus. Okay, and, and to them, it's a fulfillment of Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, Mary having a virgin birth. That's what this ties into. Sure. Okay. At least what they say it ties into. Right. Okay, and that's why they uh, they use Luke chapter one verse thirty five to say, ah, here, see, uh, Mary fulfilled this Genesis three fifteen because it was a virgin birth, therefore it was her seed that made Jesus. Right. <laughs> okay. Now, okay, so Luke one thirty five, and the angel answered and said unto her, to Mary, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you, and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Therefore, also that holy thing which shall be born of you shall be called the Son of God. So in Mary was born uh, with no male seed, okay? And therefore, this reference of Genesis 3.15 between her, your seed and her seed is got to be only fulfilled by Mary, who was able to have a child without male seed, if you catch my drift. Right. Okay. Uh Matthew chapter 1 verse 18 simply does the same basic idea mm -hmm. that Mary's pregnancy pro prophesied, in, you know, uh, uh, fulfilled, I should say, in Matthew 1. Right. Now, now, the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her way privately. Privily is old English for privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, you son of David, fear not to take unto yourself Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Again, the yep. implication is, is that Mary was able to fulfill Genesis chapter 315 because women don't have seed, but she did. Because now, she Rabbi. Was... Yes. Quick question. Yes. In Genesis 3, yep. what is the Hebrew word used for seed? Zera. And Zera, Zera means seed. Sure, but that brings me to a very important point, is in the very same book, in Genesis 24, verse 60, yep. it says, And they blessed Rivka and said to her, Our sister, may you become t thousands of ten thousands, and may your seed possess the gate of those who hate them. Right. And it's the okay. same exact Hebrew word. Exactly. But this is why this is a misrepresentation of the of the of Genesis 3:15 right. in Christian misinterpretations. Mm -hmm. Because they'll say this proves that she has seed because it talks about her mm -hmm. seed. The problem with that is that the word used, which is Zera, which is seed, doesn't mean what we plant into the ground. 
or if you pardon the crudity, uh, what a man plants in a woman, what it means is progeny, descendants. Right. Descendants, exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, and, and by the way, it, it, continuing Genesis 3.15, go, you know, can you go back to it? Okay. Yep. Uh, you get the implication in Genesis 3.15 to begin with. Okay. Because when it says uh, the rest of the verse, and I will, okay. Genesis 3.15, and I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed, but continue it. It, it shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. That's not talking about Mary stepping on every single snake that ever exists. <laughs> okay, it's talking about the descendants of the seed of the snake, yep. and the descendants, which are the seed of uh, 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 Chava, Eve. The sure. first, the first woman, because that's what Genesis three is talking about. And what's that's... even funnier is you have this here, thy seed speaking to the snake, and Christians believe that the snake is the devil. Does the devil have children? Apparently, Physic so physical children. Physical children. I mean, there's a lot to do with this verse that Christians just simply don't get right. Right. And that's another one. You know, if it's the seed the seed of the snake wait a minute if women don't have seed men do how can a spirit have seed <laughs> and it's not just spirit it's also snakes themselves this is a reference to the snake do snakes have seed no i thought they had eggs do they fertilize eggs i like... thought that well they could say the fertilizer is the egg uh, for, for the fertilizer of the egg is the seed but you can see it, it, it's no different for the snake right. than it is for Eve. Sure. Okay. But when it says it shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel, <clears throat> it's talking about the descendants, which is what the meaning of the word seed really is. Mm -hmm. It's the descendants. Right. So it, it's, talking about her seed and making up this idea that, ooh, women don't have seed, only men do, but Mary had seed because she was able to have a child without seed. So she had you know, own seed. Something really funny. Yeah. On the Exodus Project Instagram, um, I follow a lot of like mega church pastors that get away with saying little homiletic trash like this. Yeah. Right. And I make a point to just you know, sneak a comment in there once in a while. And there was this guy from Washington who's the <clears throat> pastor of a church called Hungry Generation. He is, this is like DC or is this state? <laughs> Washington State? Um, you know, mega church organization has, you know, he has like hundreds of thousands of subscribers. And I uh he made that point that women don't have seed, this is fulfilled in Jesus, and I commented. Um, with the Hebrew, that Zera is the word in 315, but Zera is also the word in 2460, as I just mentioned, um, and that is explicitly in context about the seed of a woman. And you know what he did? He cut hit you my... off. Well, he didn't just cut me off. He deleted my comment and blocked well, Of course. <laughs> because there were actually people that follow him that were commenting like the surprised face emoji on my comment, <laughs> right? And he got rid of my comment. Of course he did, because that's what they do. They don't. They don't. They don't stop to respond intellectually, intelligently. Okay, when faced with the truth of Judaism, they just delete and cut and block you. Right. That, that's and I wasn't you... rude. I wasn't rude or anything. It's not like I was being hateful. I just simply said the Steve, word in Hebrew is the same here in Genesis three and Genesis twenty four. Steve, let me tell you something. Okay. Because Christians are all over the place, and because Christians are the majority, and because there really is something called Christian privilege, okay? Oh, definitely. Uh, and it comes from being the majority. They're so used to not being challenged. No pushback, right. That, that when they get a challenge, when they get a response that makes people think, they hear it as being a horrible person and yelling and screaming and ranting when you're not you're just presenting a fact 
but right. because they're not used to it, they hear it differently. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I will give you an example. Okay, I am retired now, as you know, and Marcy and I went to go to this one synagogue for services, and it's lay led. It's not led by rabbis, but what they do is they ask people to read, you know, from the prayer book, uh, like, and, and so it makes it everybody's service. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm, everybody always says, yes, oh, sure. I'll read, you know, whatever. And when the gentleman who was asking lay people to read sections came to me, all I said was, was no, but he hears it because he's so used to hearing positive. Oh yeah, sure. I'd be happy to. That when he heard somebody say no, what he heard was, was no. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But, but that's not what I did. It really right. isn't. Okay. And people, when they're not used to having challenges, when they hear a challenge, it sounds horrible to them. They can't cope right. with it. Yeah. And then they project. And, 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 and that's what happens. One thing I say on this channel a lot is we need to realize that perception is reality. Yep. Right? The way someone perceives something to them is reality. It's reality to them. Yeah. So from his perspective, he probably thought you were being rude and crude and horrible and lousy and, and, and mean-spirited and whatever, when all you did was present a fact. Right. Yep. All right. So more quotes? Yep. So that was the first point. Now yeah. we get into the other point of the devil part right because of course the snake was the devil <laughs> yeah right and every time i say to a christian it's a snake show me in the book of genesis where it is the devil it's a snake right okay it may be a very clever uh, animal it may be a very uh what's the word uh cunning clever cunning okay in but my does book, that make does that make everybody who's cunning does that make everybody who's clever does, right. that, does that make them does evil that, does that make them the devil right does, does that make if somebody wants to trick you okay does that make them satanic sure it, it, yeah it's something it's, i made point of in my ebook on this exact topic yeah i remember was, was the the point of the physical punishments why are there physical punishments being given to this snake if it's just the devil and he isn't going to you know what i mean if it's just yeah of course if it's just the devil why is this snake being punished and if you're well, saying the, oh well the devil possessed the snake and that's why it lost its legs well then why is the why is the snake being isn't punished that, for, for, and and for isn't that a violation did. of jewish law to begin with sure one person doesn't get the punishment for sins committed by somebody else Right. If it's, and, and by the way, doesn't that also fly in the face of American law? Sure. Where, where if it's not your fault, you don't get punished for it. Right. Okay. Like, like someone who is, uh, what's the word that they use? Um, uh, give me a second. Uh, uh, the insanity plea. At the time the crime was committed, you don't know the difference between right and wrong. You may go to a psychiatrist. Okay, a mental hospital, but when they think you are no longer mentally ill, you go free. Yeah. There is no real punishment for having done whatever it is you did because the insanity plea means you didn't know what you were doing at the time right. the crime was committed. Exactly. So you're not held guilty. Mm -hmm. it, neither should the snake be held guilty. Right. If it's supposed to be the if devil. It, sure. If it is a physical snake that's under the power of the devil, exactly. Yes. How could it be held accountable? Yeah. Right. Exactly. And, and for those of us, the, those listeners to our show who are old enough to remember the devil made me do it <laughs> All right. okay so hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 <clears throat> for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood he also himself likewise took part of the same that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death that is the devil i don't i don't that's so beyond my <clears throat> purview, my F O R frame of reference. Yeah, that I'm not even sure what Paul is writing here. Okay, 
as the children are partakers of flesh and blood wait partakers of flesh and blood they're cannibals <laughs> i mean what does he mean by this sometimes i think paul writes like somebody who's literally under the influence of a drug he may have there are actually scholars that believe the same that he was on hypnotics or uh, psychedelics uh, and there's a uh not a uh, what's it called a fungus in the mid east that has hallucinogenic yeah mm -hmm. and, and can get in your food all right uh uh, partakers of flesh and blood he also himself likewise took part of the same it's speaking it's speaking about our physical bodies that we have to pay so he he became a physical body so that he could die and defeat the devil that's the context of this verse here but christians are still afraid of the devil yeah <laughs> yeah they are they, they still pray and against yeah, the, they are. you know for help against the devil and they still see the devil as enticer and right. you know the god of this world and they they have the they have the goodness scared out of them when all these exorcist movies come out, you know, as if it's the most horrifying thing in the world, you know, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, if you believe that the work was done and his head was stomped on. What are you worried about? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. First John three verse eight. He that commits sin is of the devil, for the devil sins from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. If all that is true, why, once again, are Christians still afraid of the devil? If he's been vanquished, if the snake was the devil and his head was crushed or is being crushed or has been crushed, whatever, by Jesus, why are Christians still in, a, in fear of the devil? Oh, well, he's not actually vanquished until after the second coming, Rabbi. You didn't know How that? convenient. <laughs> How convenient. Come on, Rabbi. You didn't know that? No, I didn't know that. Okay. Probably because it's not in your Bible, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> that actually might be the last citation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it doesn't mean every single one is going to be an hour and a half long, you know? Yeah, sure. And, but I think it's, these two especially are extremely important is one the apologetic of the women's seed the only way they're going to pull that one over your eyes is if you don't know hebrew right so that's why we always impress upon people to read the hebrew learn hebrew um and it's a very basic word right zion right. resh ayan you know it's a very right. very basic word um even if you can just like recognize symbols, you'll be able to catch that that word is in Genesis 3 as well as in Genesis 24. And then just read the context of both verses and you'll know, you know, these are both women that have seed, right? right. But strategically, you'll notice the KJV will render 24 as offspring, but Genesis 3 as seed. Isn't that, isn't that just so uh, convenient? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so... You know, a lot of these 365 pro supposed prophecies that Jesus supposedly fulfilled is what I would call smoke and mirrors. Oh, certainly. You know, no substance, but Christians, when they don't think, when they don't challenge, when they don't try to determine what truth is, they're like, oh yeah, 365 prophecies, yeah, Jesus fulfilled them all. Well... If Jesus fulfilled them all, why is there a need for a second coming? Sure. That means that some of them... Right. If he fulfilled it already, what's he need to come back for? There should already be complete. Yeah. Right. And, and does that mean there are there must therefore be more than 365 prophecies or else there is there there isn't a need for Jesus to come back to do them. And if he, <laughs> and if he didn't do them the first time around... He cannot be the Messiah. Right. I think another important point, too, is this is God speaking in Genesis 3. And it right. says, I'll put enmity, right, or, you know, contention, right, right between <clears throat> you and the woman and its seed and her seed. Um, I thought the devil was the, you know, preexistent enemy of God. Why is he only right. now making humanity and Jesus the devil's enemy i thought he was kicked out of heaven in the eternal past right right so yeah. so much of this stuff doesn't make sense is he god's enemy or not and 
if he is God's enemy, why is he letting God do anything to him? Right? If you are if you are a staunch enemy, but God has all the power, why not just flick him out of existence? Why everything that follows? Why Jesus? Why any of it? If he's truly your enemy, just get rid of him. <laughs> right? and, and, and and if you say that there is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but your New Testament text, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, God explicitly calls this devil, okay, the God of this world, mm -hmm. then even if you accept the Trinity as one, which I don't know how we can, okay, but even if you did, by calling the devil, the snake, whatever, a God, a Theos, just in the same verse of 2 Corinthians 4, 4, it also calls God Theos. It uses the same word for right. God as it does for the devil. Mm -hmm. You can't call it monotheism. Sure. Sure. Uh, well, that's I really that's because I truly think it was birthed out of um, paganism. You know, paganism, Enochian Hellenistic Judaism, where you had this you had this idea of opposing forces right like the zoroastrian right exactly uh, avantian idea that you have what's his name like a azura mazda or whatever and then the uh, yeah yes and uh it's something else with an a but the opposing uh, evil god and they are in war back and forth an evil god versus a good god right and it's not there's no almighty aspect about it you know it's it's a eternal struggle between a good power and an evil power and that's just not how the Almighty works. Either you're Almighty or you're not, right? Right. On on, on my radio show, uh, when we used to have not uh, uh, somebody who's not Protestant, Catholic, Jew, okay, when we would have other ministers, we had a Zoroastrian minister because there is a Zoroastrian, for lack of a better term, church in Houston, Texas. Was it Freddie Mercury? Uh, no. <laughs> Uh, but they he, he took claim he took credit on behalf of Zoroastrianism for the Christian idea of devil. Sure, and he should because that's where it came from. <laughs> uh, well, there are other places it could have come from too. Sure. Long before Christianity, there is the uh, uh, Ras Shamra texts. Hmm. which are texts found in uh, Rashamra, which is an area of ancient Mesopotamia. And these are Mesopotamian mythologies. Yeah. Okay. And there's one called uh, uh, Athtar, A-T-H-T-A-R, Athtar. And the myth of Athtar is he rebels against the number one god and gets cast down to earth to become the god of the underworld sound familiar very and very. that that predates jesus by thousands, thousands. Of, yeah right so it, it's not necessarily you know sorry zoroastrianism it's not necessarily <laughs> the world not everything in the world comes from you sure but you do at least you do at least see in the region what the worldview was oh right pa pagan world but yes yeah so yeah um and that you know i hear a lot of christians uh, this this one actually blows me away and uh, you know we can we can wrap it up after this, but this one blows me away is when I see Christians who hold on to the Book of Enoch like it is the most inspired word of God, you know. And um, I say you realize your own organization does not believe that book is canon. No one does except for one. I think it's the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, exactly the, the right. only church that believes that that is actually holy, the only inspired holy book. Right. Right. And you're holding on to it like it's the doctrinal truth of. And if, if you read it, it really does sound a lot like Christianity. Of course it does. It's so it's so dualistic and it's so esoteric. And the f I mean, Steve, the first paper I did when I walked, went off to college as a college freshman was on the book of Enoch. First page, first really? paper. Yeah. Did first you get an paper. A? Uh, Fifth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution explicitly <laughs> states that I do not have to incriminate myself. I refuse to answer. <laughs> well, you graduated, so you couldn't have done too bad. But uh, uh, yes, yeah. But uh, yeah, everybody, we're gonna we're gonna 
work our way through. And if other topics come up that you know, sure, yeah, we can put these. Which on we set these aside, we will. But it it just always gives us something to, to um, talk about, yep. really delve into, especially when this is what a lot of these missionaries are hanging their hats on. You yes. know. Yep. For sure. But, but but they don't challenge. They don't check the Hebrew. They don't. They take it out of context, mistranslate, misrepresent. And that's how they come up with every one of these, one way or the other. Yeah, yeah. I was I was shown a a short video <laughs> the other day, so it was totally comical. Um, and it was a Christian fella saying, you know, I have some new crazy revelation for you guys. Why did Jesus write in the sand during the um, episode of the woman that was about to be stoned for adultery? And he says, well, just like Jesus wrote in the sand when he gave Moses the Ten Commandments, he with his finger wrote on the rock to make the tablets. So that's why he wrote in the same. Right. Because and, every time you see <laughs> the Yud, the Hey, the Bab, and the Hey, the Tetragrammaton, the four letter name for God, they think it's Jesus. Right. And it's just like, there's so much wrong with this. <laughs> like, there, and I find it funny when they try to present historical context too, talking about, well, this is what the Pharisees believed. And it's just something totally off the wall that clearly no Jew believes, you know? But, but who's right. going to challenge him on it? You know, they can say whatever they want. They have no oversight. And if they have somebody who says, wait a minute, that's not what it says. What they hear is, you're an idiot. You're, yeah, because they've yeah. never been challenged before. And they don't know how to deal with challenge. Mm -hmm. I know too many people who wound up converting to Judaism who were literally kicked out of their church for having questions. Yeah. Because if you were a real believer, you'd have no question. Yeah, and it's always the same answer. It's just a divine mystery. That's not for us to know, right? Well, <laughs> you know, I I spoke with, I did a video with Rabbi Singer a few months ago, and we actually got on that exact topic of the divine mystery. And he said something very profound. He's like, you could, he said, good luck paging through the Hebrew Bible and finding something that is chalked up to divine mystery. It's not there, you know. Yes. Which is which is hilarious. You know, you have you have the Hebrew Bible, which is what about four times the size of the Christian Bible, yet on every page there's a divine mystery on the Christian Bible. You know, yeah, that's one way to put it, divine mystery. Yes, <laughs> uh, that's what they call it. That's that's like the whole Trinity thing. Well, it's a mysterium tremendum. It is a tr mm -hmm. huge mystery. You know. I forgot who it was. I don't remember who it was. It could be Einstein, but there's so many mythology about what Einstein said or didn't say. But basically, someone said that if you cannot explain something to an eight-year-old, you don't know what you're talking about. Right. Okay. It may not be, you sure. know, deep, and it may not be a scientific, you know, 400-page dissertation, but right. you should be able to explain virtually anything to an eight-year-old on an eight-year-old's level that they could comprehend what you're trying to say. Right. And on the topic of the divine mystery, I believe it's the end of Deuteronomy 29. It outright says that the hidden things belong to God, right? But the yes. things that are revealed belong to us, meaning the Jews, yep. and our children forever that we may keep the words of this Torah. Yep. So if it, I mean, if it's been revealed, it was revealed at Sinai, plain and simple. Yep. Right. And for the purpose of keeping the Torah, you know, so it's, it's all right there, people. Um, there's a reason that the non-Jews grab the shirt of a Jew, not the other way around, right? Yes, and it says Jew. It doesn't say Messianic Jew. It doesn't say Christian. <laughs> you know, right. it doesn't say Catholic. It doesn't say Baptist. It says the skirt of him who is a Jew. Right. Exactly right. Right. Yep. But yeah, everybody, till next time, Rabbi Stuart Federo. Absolutely. Uh, check that description. Like I said, um, I'm Steve Eisenhower, this was the Exodus Project, and we'll see you next time, everyone.